Okay, welcome to another session of the Aleta training videos. In this video session, we are going to take a look at curves and some of the tips and tricks that you can use when working with curves in Aleta. So we'll start out just by making sure that uh, we have access to our curve primitive features here. If you don't see these three icons here, right-clicking uh, around the angular icons here will bring up your uh, option menu here and you make sure you would like to make sure that you have all angles and curves selected and that will make sure that you can access the circles and toroids and pi wedge primitives here. So we'll go ahead and we'll start by drawing a circle. We're just going to draw it around the origin here. To draw a circle uh, you just click where you want the center point to be and then drag out to create the radius of your circle like so. And now by hitting Control E, we'll bring up the properties of this circle. By default in LEDIT, a circle is defined as some point uh, with a given radius. Now this is important because when we export our design, it's going to be uh, everything's going to be defined in terms of polygons. So looking at this circle, if we zoom in towards the edge of this, regardless of how much we zoom in, this curved edge looks pretty nice. Now it's a little bit deceiving because what's actually going to happen when we export is we're going to get something that looks a little bit more like uh, this. So what I just did there was I turned on a display feature to show the grid as the manufacturing grid. So this basically lets us look at the reality of the curves. So again, that option is under Tools, I'm sorry, Setup, Design, and then Grid. And down here under the grid settings, we have the manufacturing grid. This defines the minimum resolution of our polygons. Now, because we are doing our own fabrication, we can trick the software into uh, thinking we have more resolution than we actually do, just to try to get as much information out of the curves as possible. So by default, it is set to half a micron. Um, what you can do is you can lower this value down to five nanometers. And now with display curves using manufacturing grid still checked, we will see that now the edges of our circle look quite a bit better. So zooming in, they still look really good. Um, now this is a fairly large circle. I mean we have a 10 micron radius, so we have actually a 20 micron diameter. Now if you were going to try to make an even smaller circle, now that is about as small as we can make. We have a uh, 2 micron diameter circle. Even at 5 nanometers, uh, the curve still looks really good. Now this doesn't mean that this is actually what you're going to get when you fabricate your mask because you're still going to be limited by the resolution of the pattern generator itself. All we're doing by doing this is giving the pattern generator the most information possible. Uh, so basically by hitting Control E again we see that this circle is still defined as a center point with a radius. Now what we can do is under the draw convert to polygon we're going to go ahead and convert this circle uh, to a polygon and capture those data points at the higher resolution. So now hitting Control E we'll see that this object has now been converted to a polygon and we have a list of the 76 vertices that make up that particular circle. Now we can go ahead and turn our manufacturing grid back to half a micron and we still retain the original arc around uh, our circumference of our circle here. If we tried to draw the same circle again, we're going to get something like that. So why switch back and forth is the question, I suppose. Um, if you're using curves for certain aspects of your design, this little trick allows you to change the manufacturing grid so that you can get the maximum resolution out of your curves, which in turn will increase your file size by storing um, quite a few more data points. And then you can change it back if you're working with um, more linear shapes or more regular polygons so that you aren't including all that extra data and basically increasing your file size unnecessarily. So when you're working with curves, you can switch the manufacturing grid to increase your resolution. And then when you're done working with your curves, you can change it back 
Now keep in mind that before you change it back you're going to want to convert those shapes to polygons in order to capture that high resolution. And also you just want to make sure that display curves using manufacturing grid is checked. That way you'll be seeing what you'll actually uh, get in, in your export as opposed to thinking you're going to get a, a better or higher resolution shape. So um, that is circles. Uh, some of the other curved primitives that we have access to are toroids and pie wedges. So with toroids, the uh, first mouse click is going to um, set your starting point and then you can drag your mouse out to create the radius of the first arc. Now you see the jagged edges here indicate what we're actually going to get because we have our manufacturing grid show. And then as you continue to drag out you will create the um, radius of the second arc of the toroid. So we could make something like this and also then we can drag back and we can create an open or a closed feature like so. So we'll go ahead and make that toroid there. Okay, and the other shapes that we have are a pie wedge. And so for a pie wedge, again, we click to set our starting point, and then we draw our, or drag our mouse out to extend the diameter of the pie wedge, and then our next click is going to create the pie, and we can create the radial angle here going this way or the other to make our Pac-Man pie shape here. And again, you notice that the edge of this is looking jagged because we have the display set to show the manufacturing grid. Just in contrast, if you had that unchecked, your curves are always going to look perfect. So just be aware that that's not actually what you're getting. So at any point in the process, you can middle click to go back. So if I want to go back one and uh, start my pie wedge over again, I can just middle click and then complete my pie wedge like so. And I like to make sure that I keep this checked when I'm working with the curves. Okay, so those are pie wedges, toroids, and circles. Those are the curved primitives that we have in LEdit. Now some of the other things that we can do with curves is in regards to modifying existing polygons. So we'll just pick a different layer here just to give ourselves some color differentiation. Uh, for example now, if we have some polygon that we've created, like so, what we can do is using the control button we can change the function of our mouse. So by hitting control we can see that our mouse functions change our left and right mouse buttons. So if we hold down control and we select just a single edge of this polygon, and I'll just get my mouse click here. I'll just select just the outside edge there. And I see that just the outside edge here is highlighted. And now I can do a couple things. Again, um, I'll go back to my polygon tool here. Now holding control, I can actually now create, if it works for me, oh, I'm sorry, middle button, control and middle button, I can now arc the edges of this polygon. So you can sort of expand or contract the edges of the polygon, um, editing it in this way. You can make it concave or convex, however you like, and you can do that only when you have a single edge selected. And so that's control and left button. Uh, to select the edge and then control and middle button to expand it. Okay, and uh, so one other thing that you can do uh, when editing selective edges of a given polygon is um, again, if we just hold down control but this time do not select the specific edge, you'll notice that our middle mouse button has now changed to say vertex. So, what we can do is we can pull up any one of these edges in any given orientation that's allowed to create uh, vertexes here on the endpoints in addition to curving them out. Uh, so that's a little bit of a trick, not necessarily related to curves, but just another little trick that you can uh, do when editing shapes. So uh, one of the last things that we'll look at in regards to curves is uh, corners. So we can uh, there are two options. We can 
chamfer or fillet our corners. So what we'll do is we'll just give ourselves a little bit of a shape here with um, inside and outside corners. And so what we can do now under the draw uh, curve tools at the bottom here, we have chamfer and fillet options. So both of them will bring up the same menu. Just going to basically select one of these radio boxes here. So what we can do is we can select individually the convex or the concave corners, so outside or inside corners. And the first thing we'll do is we will uh, just chain for them. So that's just going to essentially bevel the edges. And we will do a one micron, sure. And let's see what else do we have here, edges. So, uh, these options, can run vertically to angle. So we have some angular options here. And we can do it on the entire object, or we could individually select the edges we want. We'll do the entire object. So, okay. So, basically what we've done is we have chamfered the edges, or beveled the edges, uh, one micron back from the corner on both the inside and outside edges. So, the other option that we have here, we'll just go ahead and undo that, is to fill it them. So what this is going to do is instead of creating an angular bevel, we are going to create a radial corner. So again, now we're specifying the radius. So the way that uh, this works is we're going to create an imaginary circle, uh, basically just that is going to contact the edges of our polygon here. And that's going to determine the curve of our corner based on the radius that we select here. So we'll go with a one micron radius again and we will see that, ah, good point. In this case we got what looks like an angular uh, fillet and that is because we have our manufacturing grid set to display the curves using that. If we uncheck that, we should see some nice faux round corners. Now of course um, if we want to actually obtain that corner using the manufacturing grid, we can go ahead again and switch our grid back to 5 nanometers and we'll see that we still get our nice curved edges. So those are some tricks that you can do if you want to uh, create curved corners on your polygons. You can use the uh, fillet option and again that is located under draw and curve tools. So that about wraps up the topics for angles and curves in LEDIT. So the main things to remember is that you can manipulate the manufacturing grid to increase the resolution of your curves uh, before they're exported, but you will be limited to the resolution of the pattern generator. All right, thanks a lot for watching and uh, stay tuned for more videos in the future. Thanks.